welcome to the World Summit on the Information Society 2017. I am very pleased to be joined by the Chairman of JESSE, Mr. Luis Neves. Hello. Hello. And thank you for joining us. So, the Global E-Sustainability Initiative has a long-time collaboration with ITU, whose Deputy uh, Secretary General currently serves as a JESSE board member. So, could you tell us a bit more about this collaboration and some of its most important milestones? Well, I guess the collaboration is based uh, on the fact that we, we have a common goal, a common interest. Uh, basically, what the ITU is doing is to promote the role of technology. And uh, since technology will be fundamental for a sustainable world, and yes, it was created around um, the sustainability dimension of the technology as well. A group of companies came together 16 years ago, and uh, we said, OK, ICT will be fundamental for sustainable development for people, for growth, for the environment. And uh, through collaboration and uh, partnerships, uh, we started to promote the role of uh, information and communication technology in relation to sustainability in general or in, in the broad sense. And by that time, uh, of course, we came uh, uh, to the ITU uh, as a fundamental partner. And uh, we invited the ITU to be part of the JESSE board. And since then, Malcolm Johnson has been uh, playing a fundamental role also in helping us to drive uh, our objectives and our strategic uh, objectives. And, um, and this collaboration has been lasting uh, now for over 10 years. Uh, I've been the chairman of JESSE now for 10 years. And, uh, and we have been producing am amazing work together. Uh, actually, I, I said this, uh, this morning in, in, in the high level session, that um, the first time I, I met the ITU General Secretary, Ulin Zhao, what was in Poznan at the climate conference, we were together promoting the role of technology in relation to climate change. And uh, we have been working in different uh, reports, uh, different events. We have been organizing uh, joint events together in connection with, uh, uh, with the Sustainable Development Goals in New York. And uh, there are more to come. So, talking about reports, you have produced a series of smart reports. Can you tell us a bit more about the concept and how this links in with SDGs? Well, there is um, an history behind the reports. The reports came out at a time where there were critic voices around the technology and uh, there were many stakeholders saying, well, technology is damaging, damaging the environment, is not good for the environment. Uh, the analyst Gartner even put a figure on it and said, well, the ICTs uh, represents 2% of the global emissions, the same as aviation. And we said, well, probably that's true, but we need to understand what is the benefit of ICT? What can ICT do for the others? And so we asked McKinsey to do a first report for us, and we asked three questions. What is our footprint? So how much are we emitting? How much are we enabling? And what is the value of it? And McKinsey did, an, uh, by that time in 2008, an amazing report. And uh, it was an in independent report uh, supervised by the Climate Group, an NGO in London. And the results of the report were amazing. So in fact, the 2% were confirmed. But uh, the enabling capacity of technology was five times bigger than our own footprint. So if we are five times better, why shouldn't we use ICT? That was our question. And, uh, and then the value around it was in the order of the billions of dollars. I cannot remember the figure anymore because I only have the latest ones. And uh, after that, we produced two additional reports just to verify whether the, the findings of the first report were correct and uh, how we was it going. In the latest report, Smarter 2030, that was done by Accenture Strategy, uh, was bigger in scope. We enlarged it to the societal dimension of the technology. And the conclusions are amazing. So the report came to the conclusion that we can reduce 20% of the global emissions up to 2030. That means that for the first time, we can decouple. So our technology can decouple economic growth from, um, from climate. Th secondly, we could realize $11 trillion of benefits, uh, which is equivalent, equivalent to the GDP of China. And uh, finally, we will be connecting 2.5 billion more people, giving access to 1.6 billion on e-health and half a million on e-education. So just to mention a couple of, of figures. And these are the developments that are taking place. And uh, if those developments are right, which I think they are, and they have been, let's say, from the first report to this one, we have been seeing the figures growing up. 
um, we need to deploy uh, technology, we need connectivity, we need broadband. These are this is fundamental for sustainable growth and it's important that uh, different stakeholders, including governments, understand that. That's very impressive work and ambitious targets as well, obviously. And what's key is a holistic approach, isn't it? Yes, uh, we need a uh, holistic approach. We, we need uh, different um, actors to understand what is important, where we need to focus. Uh, my belief is that if we come all together, policymakers, uh, UN uh, institutions, the private sector, around the need for uh, deployment of broadband, of connectivity, and if we use that as a, the fundamental and key technology, uh, we will be see, seeing a different world in 2030. Without that, we will never achieve the Sustainable Development Goals. I'm deeply convinced that uh, with connectivity, with smart solutions, smart agriculture, e-health, uh, e-education, uh, smart buildings, smart mobility, all those smart things, uh, we will be really achieving a better world. Uh, and for that to happen, we need those partnerships. We need everybody to understand that we need to be working all together, that uh, from the policy side, we, we need a, a good regulatory framework. From the private sector, we need to put uh, money uh, in front and we need to invest. And uh, from the UN system, we need the help of this global organization, uh, organizations like the ITU, to drive deployment of those technologies. And what do you think are barriers currently in terms of achieving a full digital transformation of the world? And how can we overcome them? Well, I think th we have, I would uh, say, two main barriers. I think many current industry sectors, they are afraid of technology. They think, and well, they think and they are right to some extent. We will be disrupting many current models. And by doing that, of course, we will be affecting current businesses. Uh, on the other side, if they embrace technology, they will see and they will be re reaping the benefits of that. But it's not easy. This is a very uh, difficult pr dialogue process because the first reaction when something transformative comes is to, I is to step back. So that's one of the issues. The other one, I think the policymakers have not yet fully understood um, the need for uh, supporting technology deployment and uh, for deployment of uh, broadband and, and connectivity. And th these for me are the two key things that need to happen. And uh, that requires from us, from uh, the private sector, from GSE as an industry organization, from, from the ITU, uh, a strong dialogue process so we can convince them about, about this. Uh, the world is changing. The world is changing completely. Technology is moving very, very fast. The transformative capacity of our technology, the disruptive capacity, will be happening whether people like it or not. There are challenges that we need to address, but the benefits are so huge that we cannot miss the opportunity. Mr. Luis Nevis, thank you very much. Thank you so much.